Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made. We're glad you're with us today. Yes. I'm Pastor Eric Lambert of Bethel Deliverance International Church, and we are bringing you the Christian and the culture. As always, joining me are my outstanding co-hosts, Pastor Brian Weatherspoon of Tabernacle Harvest Church in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, and Pastor Timothy Baldwin of Bethel Deliverance Church Northeast. Gentlemen, greet our audience today. God bless you, Christian and Culture family. It's so good to be with you today. And uh, as always, move the coffee table, you know, we'll move the kids aside. We're going to have a good topic on this Sunday. It's a hot topic. Christian and the Culture family, welcome back. Come on in, take a seat, and let's get started. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> well, praise the Lord, everyone. I tell you, we are living in exciting times. When I was a young Christian, I would read the Bible, and I always was, you know, deeply, deeply impressed by how specific Jesus would be mm. when he taught prophecy and end-time events. Yes. Now here we are, several years later, watching those things come to pass. And it is exciting, yes, scary, it is. But, exciting but exciting to see that the Bible is true and the Word of God never fails. Today, we're going to go back into the Word of God and we're going to challenge you, the believer, along with each of us into examining one of what I feel is one of the most frightening passages of Scripture in the book of Revelation chapter 2 as Jesus addresses the church at Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the main points in this particular teaching is that he tells the church he is very appreciative for their efforts. They've tried those who said they were apostles. They found them to be liars. And he said, listen, you've gotten under the load and you've borne. In other words, you've worked for me and you've been effective in your working. Yes. Now, that's enough to make you feel good. And I'm sure there are many of you watching right now that you could just stop with that portion of the scripture and say, I'm faithful teaching my Sunday school class. I'm a good husband. I'm a good yes. wife. I've done everything my pastor required of me and the Lord is pleased with me. But Jesus says, hold it. There's a comma there, not a period. Mm -hmm. He says, while you have done significant work and you've been excellent in your performance, mm -hmm. I still have something against you. Mm -hmm. You no longer love me. Gentlemen, we start there today. Mm. Our audience wow. is going to ask the question, what does it mean to lose your first love? And can we identify our first love so much so that the people of God will be able to say, you know what, I have walked away. Mm. Let's examine the first part. What do you think Jesus is referring to when he talks about you've left your first love? Uh, Jesus is saying uh, your first love, the Father, your first love, Him, the Savior. You, you've lost your first love. I, mm. I, that, that's, that's the crux of it right there. That's the base of it right there. That you've lost your love, your affection for me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's so that's, that's a I'm, probably probably waiting waiting for I'm ready to walk out. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for some more. You nailed that one. Uh, yeah, you lost your first love. Uh, it puts me in the mind of you know, when you were in first love with you, with my wife, you know, you you can't get enough of them. You know, you, you you talk all night, you talk on the phone, you you know, your thoughts are continuously about them. You almost ache for them, you know, yeah. if you will. You know, you it, there's a, there's a real desire. The day doesn't go by, but as time goes on, if you're not careful, it can feel like you've lost all of that. So I think when you lose your first love, you lose your zest for God. It's easy to work, and I've said it all the time, amazingly, people can work for God and be very disconnected. They can work for God, work in church, and never even know Him. I think that's exactly why the scripture says, even on that day, many will say, Lord, I did all these things in your name, yeah. and He will say, I don't even know you. Mm. So, so we have uh, fantastically found a way to interwove in working for God as loving Him. Mm. And, and this is That's where we good. need to get the divide here and go, okay, there's one thing to work, but you really shouldn't work until you get the love down packed, mm -hmm. right? So get your affection back on God, right? Get your attention back on Him. You know, ache for Him. You, know, you can't go seasons without praying, reading the Word, because at some point, love says, I should ache for Him. I should really desire more from Him. So I think we can't lose sight of that. I think we kind of separate the work and the love piece. Let's be a little more specific. In what ways can we tell our audience mm -hmm. to 
what should they look for when we say lo lo uh, you've left your first love? Yeah. You're losing that. What, what yeah. are some of the ways to lose that love? It, it's funny. I, I look at it, you know, when you first come to Christ, mm -hmm. you're on fire. We always use yes. that term. I think that's like a synonymous term with people who, who just give their lives to the Lord, right? Uh, and, and it's like you always want to pray. You always want to hear from God. Yes. Whether you're hearing from Him or not, <laughs> or not. it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's the possibility yes, that God may talk to me wow. if I come into His presence, Ooh, yes. if I just humble myself before yes, him and, yes, yes. and lay out yes. and, and the passion that you have yes. for him that's to me that's what it looks like you stop doing those things yeah. you stop praying as much you yeah. stop reading your word you even there is even less of an expectation yes. for God to move in your life because yeah, yeah. the love mm -hmm. has been lost for your relationship with the Lord and so wow. so yeah man I'm telling you that the passion is gone your expectations have waned you know and you get into this this mundane routine of yeah. being a believer Okay, I wake up, mm -hmm. you know, I do some devotionals, or maybe I'll mm -hmm. read today, maybe I don't. But that passion that you had when you first came to Him, yeah. and, and, and God doesn't really help us much because right. He woos us right. when we first yeah. come, and He right. almost makes us think, I'm going to give you, you know, everything yeah. you ask for, I'm going to answer yeah. all your prayers, and then one day, like you said, He'll just pull the rug from under you and, 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 show, and show you how much He loves you. But yeah, yeah. We, we lose all of those things. Wow. Wow. That's a good point, Pastor Tim, and I, I'm just going to add to it. You lose enthusiasm. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, that, that Greek word, the enthusiasmos. You, you lose some effervescence, mm -hmm. right? your, your attentiveness. And, How? And let's, How? You, How do I lose enthusiasm, <clears throat> yeah. say, here in the 21st century? Yes, sir. I mean, you make a good point, mm -hmm. but unpack it a little bit. Okay, very good. Very good. I'll unpack it. So, you know, you lose that zest. Let's go, you know, the, the desire to reach others for the kingdom no enthusiasm for it, right? You almost start to think it'll just happen the way it happens, right? Mm. When you were first saved and on, on fire, as we said, you were, you were willing to go out. You wanted to see it happen. But after a while, if you're not careful, if you don't manage that, you'll start to lose that. You'll lose passion even for church service. We see it happening. There's no enthusiasm, right? When you're enthusiastic about church, as Pastor Tim said it, you, you're almost on the edge. I remember the days as a young Christian, we, we'd almost be running down the street at, at, on Sheltonham Avenue to get into service. You remember that? Yeah. We, we'd almost throw, I almost threw my kid in the nursery one day just to, <laughs> just to get in there, boy, just so I could, I wanted service. I wanted to get into the, but I had enthusiasm for it, right? And that enthusiasm is catchy. It, 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 it kind of gets other people. It's contagious. And what I'm seeing now is people have a take it or leave it mentality. When you get that way, you're losing your I, first I, I want to add to that. Amos says something that's, that's amazing. He says, he says, you're over here and you have all of these things. Yeah. He says, you're laying on your couches, yeah. you know, a uh, uh, piped in ivory. And, yeah, and he right. said, and, and what he's really saying yeah. is that you become complacent. So yes. comfortable that complacent. you become so comfortable yeah. and some, so complacent that you've forgotten about who I was. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And I think that's what happens to us. Yeah. We grow in our lives. We evolve. Mm -hmm. We get degrees. We get jobs, yeah. finances. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes this, this complacency yeah. with our relationship with, yeah. with the Lord. And I'm going to make this statement mm -hmm. because it's, it's almost like I have what I need. Why do I need you? Yeah. Mm. Well, well mm. yeah, because when you're broke, you pray. Right. <laughs> right? When, when you start to acquire more, you pray less. It's, it's an amazing thing. We talked about this last time that you lose fight the more you get. Mm. Right? It's, it's the lay of the sea and error. You know, because you say you have much, you, you're not hot. You're, so you've lost your fight. You lose enthusiasm. But these people so in Ephesus are not being challenged by what they have. No. They're being challenged by what they do. Doing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And when you spoke of yeah. losing enthusiasm, yes, sir. could it be because of the redundancy of how many, how many times do you go out soul winning before you no longer care? No how longer many times do, yeah. do you pray until you get tired of praying? That's very true. If you lose sight on who you're doing it for. Yes. yes now, yes. you know, many of our people mm -hmm. that are watching uh, and believers as well in general work for the kingdom. I mean, yeah. we're not we're not saved by works, but yeah. the way pastors make it is you better do something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But how do we set a boundary? Mm -hmm. How do we work so that it doesn't pull us away from the Lord that we serve? Yeah. How do we do that? Yeah. I mean, we don't have too many scriptural references sure, for it. Right. Sure. I mean, Paul stuff. talks about it, mm -hmm. but Paul was Paul seemed to be more 
involved with relationship with the Christ. Right. Yeah, he was the only one who uses the terms put off and put on. Right. He loved that Hebrew yeah. idiom of take off that old life, yeah. put on that new That's life, right. which That's really right. represents abandoning one and putting and on putting the other. On another. That's right. But how do we tell our 21st century Christians in light of this work mm. culture, mm. How do we tell them to set boundaries? How do you set boundary mm -hmm. in ministry work? It, it's, you said it, it was the key. Paul talks about relationship with Christ. Yes. That the need to know him mm. and the fellowship of his suffering, mm. you, know, you know, and the power of his resurrection, the, the need to know him. That's how the boundaries are set. Because if I draw a line in the sand and say, before I ever do anything for him, yeah. what is my relationship with him like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I spending, the, it sounds cliche-ish, but it's really no, there's no substitute yes. in terms of spending time with God and yeah. really posturing yourselves to hear from him and to be led by his spirit. You, yeah. you, you just can't, how many people do we know? How many times have, have we done it, done work for the Lord mm -hmm. without any passion behind it because it's become mundane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The relationship with the Lord is what keeps it passionate, is yeah. what keeps it vibrant and mm -hmm. moving and mm -hmm. living and breathing. But the moment it becomes redundant and it becomes just this mundane routine, it, there's no power behind what we're doing anyway. Yeah. You know, Pastor Tim, very good point. Uh, you know, I used to say this, we've heard it in growing up in teams and stuff like that. Worse than losing is uh, only trying to maintain the game. Wow. Right? So we, we've developed a mindset in Christendom that we're playing it safe, right? Mm. So, so worse than just losing a game, we're playing it so safe that it's almost like we've boxed the Holy Spirit in. Wow. The, the reason why the first century church saw, felt, walked in the power of Christ is because they weren't playing it safe in the four walls. Right. They, they were actually affecting the world, upsetting the kingdom of darkness, and they had a heat for that. And that, you know, it's a strange dichotomy here, but it's almost like the, the more hot water you get in with the world, the more you see the glory of God. Right. Right. The, the more you're playing it safe, you kind of wind up. You become up. them. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we've played it safe so long that we don't know who we are. And, and we are struggling to find out, you know, what are we supposed to be? Are we supposed to be friends of the world or are we supposed to be loving God? Because right now we're friends of the world. Mm. And that part is cutting off that love for God. So we've got to get back to that place where we really love him. Stop playing it safe. Jesus said something <sighs> that to me speaks to the issue at Ephesus, early in his ministry, he says, I, uh, my, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Yes. And he says, I only seek to do the will of my Father. Mm. So if there are to be works that we should engage, and I agree that we should do something. Absolutely. I mean, we're not saved by works, but we're saved unto good right. works. Yes. And those works are to represent the kingdom. Right. But they shouldn't be at the expense of God. Yeah. So Jesus then cautions them. He says, remember from where you've fallen, repent and do your first works. What does it mean to do that? Yeah, I mean, come on, let's works. be realistic. Yeah. People aren't going to go back to all night prayer. They're not <laughs> going to go back to reading 10, oh, 12 man. chapters a day. So mm -hmm. when it says, what steps should we take? to return to our first love. Those that are watching us, and I know the word of God has pierced someone's heart. They're yes. feeling disconnected from God. They're feeling like, because you notice today, a lot of times people will feel, oh, I just really need to feel God. Mm -hmm. And they'll turn on a TV preacher, right? <laughs> or they'll go to a service. Sure. Is that really the direct way to deal with this, gentlemen? So, so you know, I, I'm going to give you one, Bishop. If, if we're going to return back to our first love, if we're going to do that, we have to learn to not compromise our lifestyles. Mm -hmm. And when I say compromise, it seems, it seems a little general, but when I say compromise, again, the way we live is a direct reflection in terms of what mm -hmm. our relationship with the Lord is like. Mm -hmm. There are just some things that I just can't do anymore. Yeah. You know, the, and there are things that, that I struggle with that I know I shouldn't do. Yeah. And that it's, for me, it's, it's, it's the Lord yes. working in me and yes. allowing the Holy Spirit to, to, to prune those things out of me. And, and I have to make myself available. Yes to the things of God, Absolutely. to the Holy Spirit. Yes. I have to avail myself to the Holy Spirit. If I'm gonna get yes. back to my first love, yes. I'm gonna have to avail myself to the Holy Spirit and allow him to lead me and guide me and not just hearing, but doing, doing yes. what he says. Again, God can handle his own work. Yeah. You know, God, God doesn't yeah. need us. He can just turn the light off on us and say, okay, you know what, enough with you, <laughs> what you're doing. But getting back to our first love, I'm telling you, mm. availing yourself to the Holy Spirit, not compromising our lifestyles and, and, and allowing the Lord to just 
reshape us yeah, yeah. and to just pour himself into us, yeah. getting back to those intimate places intimate and those times, yeah. those times of just consecration mm. with God or, or those times of being alone with God, you know? We talked about this uh, before, and uh, this, is, this is not a boast. This is just a fact, you know, getting up early in the morning with God. Absolutely. You know, for me, and, and it's something that I've learned to do to be very intentional. Mm -hmm. And Bishop talked about that. We may not get back to all night prayer, but you can pray for an hour. Yeah. Or maybe you can. Jesus asked the disciples, can you pray but an hour? <laughs> well, okay, half an hour, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you can make a half an hour if you want to start getting back to that. You may not read the entire Bible in a, in a week, but you can read some chapters. You can make a devotion. It goes back to that key word. We've been talking about this. What is devotion? Giving of yourself. So those of you listening, you may have to give of more of your time. You may have to carve out some time. You know, cut the TV off, move the phone, and get back to some very basic, Lord, I need you, and I need you, and you only. But here's, here's one of our dilemmas, and, and um, you know, the Bible teaches that we should consider ourselves lest we also be tempted, yes. if someone's overtaken in a fault. So yes. it's easy for us to talk about uh, the people that we lead yeah. missing and yeah. becoming members of the Ephesian church. Yeah. But how much time do we spend with Absolutely. God as yeah. his leaders? Yeah, it's important. And I'm not suggesting that we're atheistic in any way. No, what I'm no. saying is we get so caught up in work of the church yes. that we miss spending time with the Lord Absolutely. of the church. Yes, yes. I think pastoring is the only career whose job description is formed by the people yeah. rather than the person who called them. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you find that many people who enter full-time ministry take that to mean, oh, now I got to go to all these community meetings, yes. these right. outreach right. meetings, yes. when God really may be calling us into full-time to sit with him. So the yes. question becomes, yes. do we have the ability to sit with God for eight hours a day and make that our job? Woo! That is that, the question. We should have that ability. We should. But, but that's a good question. and and. I, I don't know if, I'm going to speak to you for me, sure. it, that's a tough task in terms of, uh, and it should not be, no. mm -hmm. and we should be posturing ourselves to do that. You know, is an hour, is two hours a day enough? You know, John Wesley, you love that quote. He I says, I have it. so much to accomplish in a day that I, I pray five hours before I get morning, my day yes, started. Yes. You know, and God can accomplish in five hours, you know, what we need to accomplish in a year, yes. you know, in prayer by just yes. talking to us, giving us direction. And so, again, I think that's important. You're mm -hmm. absolutely right. Our first task is to love God. And, and no one teaches us those things. No, absolutely No not. one teaches us how to no. do that. I know, uh, you know, Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. And I always thought the cross was, while it is symbolic of a place of death, yeah. but death to self. Sure. I never felt the real impact of it until a few years ago when the mm. Lord says to me, I want your Saturdays. Mm. Mm. Now, when he said it to me, it was winter time. <laughs> and okay. I'm like, hey, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I, you know what? He said, I want your Saturday. Yes, I want sir. you to sit with me. Yeah. Then spring came. Yeah. And with spring comes cookouts. I want to go out. Traveling. Yes, sir. You know, yeah. going places. And so now it's a cross. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's yeah. 75 degrees outside. Yeah. The sun is shining. <laughs> the birds are outside the window singing. And you want my Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then it's like, you mean I can't go walking in the mall yeah, and all now, those now things? It's a burden. And sometimes yeah. I do. Sometimes yeah. I, I, I disobey sure, I get because it. I, I'm out in the street and I go do that. Yeah, and he'll sure. say, no, I want you. And I find it, I find that that's a hard thing. It's it difficult. would have been easier for him to say, you know, don't drink liquor. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't <laughs> no drink problem. anyway, but right. that yeah, would have been right. no, problem. no problem. Right. But right. to Not take my time. Yeah. Yeah. And so when Jesus says, you don't love me anymore. Oh, yeah. you'll work for me. You won't yeah. smoke. You won't drink. Right. You won't you'll, fornicate. You'll do you won't right. do that. But you won't sit and spend time yeah. with wow. me. Yeah, yeah. You know how hard yeah. it is to spend time with a God who doesn't always talk? Yeah. And yeah. yet the Bible says in the tabernacle, that's all they did all day. The that's, priests spent their whole day in did. the presence of God. Days mm. and nights. Great day in Days the morning. That's got to be yes, mind boggling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To love him so much, you just spend your whole day in his presence. Just going in and taking care of the stuff. That's, and that's what he's calling us to do. Yes, sir. He's calling us to be mm. people who spend time. You used the yes. term, you said ache for him. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes. Do you ache for him today? Wow. 
Hmm. Do you ache for God today or are you so desirous of wow. a ministerial position that you haven't spent time with the one who wow. called you? Do you realize you're going, if you're a born again Christian, you are going to spend eternity, eternity. with God. Wow. I don't know. I don't, I don't have any idea how long eternity mm. is. Mm. I really don't. I just know it's a long time. <laughs> Someone once said eternity is identified by a hummingbird moving the rock of Gibraltar from the, Atlant from the Mediterranean to the Pacific Ocean wow. one pebble at a time. Wow. Wow. Now that's a long time. That's a long time. But you're going to spend eternity with God. And wouldn't it be amazing if you go to heaven and you really don't have the slightest idea of how to worship him, wow. how to talk with him. Now, you're not going to learn these things in heaven. We should be learning those things now. We should be learning love now. We should be learning appreciation. Mm. The church at Ephesus had a problem. They worked themselves into a frenzy, but it was noticed by the Lord. So those of you working, the Lord sees you working. Yes. God bless you. Yes. Keep on working. However, <laughs> set a boundary. Mm. Yes. Know when to stop yes. and say, you know what? I've done enough teaching. I've done enough ministry. Today, I'm going to sit with God. Mm. I believe, and I could be wrong in my exegesis, but I believe that God puts the Sabbath in for two reasons. Number one, to rest the body because yes. the body is not a machine. It can't go forever. Number two, to force you to take time to acknowledge him. Yes. Amen. Remember that Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Keep Set it holy. some time aside to get to know God. Father, how are you? Yeah. How's your heart? How, yeah. you know, what are you thinking? What, what, what's going on in my world? What, here's what's happening. Yeah. I need your direction. Yes. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. Mm. I'm going to ask each pastor to take 15, 20 seconds and pray for you so that you can unburden yourself and love God some more. Wow. Pastors. Father, we thank you right now for those that are listening. And Lord, we pray as your scripture so eloquently puts that Lord, you would help us to all enter into that rest, a place of trusting you. And I pray Lord that you would just bestow your peace upon those who hear us today. Give them your peace in Jesus name, amen. Father, we bless you today, God, and honor you for uh, Lord, for your love for your people. We thank you for your love, God. We pray that those who are watching right now, God, that wherever they are, Lord, and whatever they are burdened with, oh God, Father, release them from the burdens yeah. of life, God, especially the burden of ministry, oh God. Mm. Ministry should not be burdensome, oh God, Father, but it should be joyful, God. It should be passionate and done in a way, God, that honors you, oh Lord. I pray right now mm. that they find rest in Christ Jesus, that he is the Sabbath, oh God. I pray yeah. these things in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, amen. Amen. You know, we love you and we bring you these broadcasts to enable you to stand against the devices of the devil. Our adversary wants to distract you. He wants to frustrate you. He wants to take your peace away. In the midst of the storm, Jesus was sleeping on the boat. I love that story. He hadn't said a word yet. He was sleeping on the boat. The disciples were frustrated because of the magnitude of the storm. And some of them were fishermen, but they understood that these storms were dangerous. Mm. And they cried out. Now, I admire the fact that they cried out. I don't particularly like what they said. When they said, don't you care that we're <laughs> perishing? <laughs> and Jesus stands up. Beloved of God, mm, mm, mm. the text is very strange and many people <laughs> interpret it differently. But he gives two commands. The first is peace, yes. peace. And the Bible says when he gives that command, the winds begin to stop and all becomes calm on the sea. And then he gives the second command. He said, be still. Yes. Now I believe there he was talking to the apostles. Yeah. And I'm saying to you today, be still. Yeah. Stop running around thinking that your salvation is contained in your service. Mm. No, mm. it's contained in your relationship. Yes. As you spend time with our Father, he will reveal who he is to you and give you a sense of peace. And like David, you'll be able to encourage yourself in the Lord your God. Thanks for joining us today. And remember, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And you are more than a conqueror. Yes. May God continue to bless you as you look to the Christ to bring you through every trick and trap 
of our adversary. You be blessed in his name. Discover God's design for family through Bishop Eric Lambert's sermon series, Strengthening the Family. This powerful series will provide you with practical instruction on how to strengthen your family relationships using scriptures from the Word of God. Receive the five-part series, Strengthening the Family, on CD or DVD for your donation of $35 or more. To order, call 1-800-550-3284 or visit ericlambertministries.org. Get your copy of Strengthening the Family so you can build a family life that brings victory to your home and glory to God. Does God desire for his followers to be conformed to today's culture? Or are believers supposed to function, think, and be distinctively different? In his new book, Cancel the Culture, Securing Our Identity as Christians, Bishop Eric A. Lambert Jr. provides guidance for the Christian trapped in a struggle for identity. Each chapter of the book presents a challenge for the reader to cancel a specific ungodly influence of modern culture. As these influences are abandoned, the special purpose of God's calling for His children will become clearer. Journey toward rediscovering your identity as a child of God by ordering your copy of Cancel the Culture. Visit ericlambertministries.org to order the book and find more resources that will enhance your walk with Christ. Deliverance app is now available to download for free at Apple Store and Google Play. You can tune into Sunday services through live stream, view video sermons on demand, listen to audio messages through podcasts, send prayer requests, communicate through social media, and you can contribute to the ministry simply by using today's technology. Get access to all of Bethel's media outlets and church events right at your fingertips. Go to the Apple Store or Google Play and download Bethel Deliverance to get connected today. Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Lambert. I want to welcome you to the Eric Lambert Ministries website. On this website, you will be able to get information about books, CDs, DVDs, and even the printed word designed to help you in your walk with Christ. You'll find information about our YouTube channel and the services that we have at Bethel Deliverance International Church. And we want you to understand that our ministry is designed to lift up Jesus, to glorify his name, and to get you, the listener, connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. I am excited about the Eric Lambert Ministries website, and I want you to join us as often as you can, and we guarantee two things. You'll have a closer walk with Jesus. Number two, your life will be richer. God bless you. Access resources that will enrich your Christian walk today by visiting ericlambertministries.org. That's ericlambertministries.org. The Christian and the Culture is a production of Bethel Deliverance International Church. Thank you for watching. Be blessed.